Lindsay with The Culture Project, and I'm here with the wonderful Sarah Swafford at Seek 2019. Sarah, thanks so much for being with us. My gosh, I'm honored. I'm a huge Culture Project fan for years, and I am so pumped to be with you guys. Great. Thanks so much. Yeah. Um, so my first question for you is, do you think someone can actually be happy living a chaste life, living a life of chastity? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the Miss America answer. I believe that we can serve, we can uh, solve world peace and have chastity. No, just kidding. Um, chastity is the friend of love and the cycle of use. And what I talk about in my ministry all the time is just being aware of the fact that you know when you're not being loved well, but to admit it is really hard. And I think that uh, the question to the culture is like, well, if you really love me, then you'd like prove it to me, show it to me. And the answer is, if you really loved me, then you'd sacrifice for me. And that it's a hard reality because it's like well, no that doesn't make sense like it's the opposite of, no I want to show you it's like no actually it's saying that like I love you and I want to like what is true and good and beautiful about you I want to like safeguard that and I want to preserve that and so chastity for me is like it's really hard because I think people get a it gets a bad rap because people think chastity means abstinence and so they're like oh so I just like you know like when they when people hear emotional chastity or emo like emotional virtue they get super confused mm -hmm. um, but chastity Chastity is a thing in marriage as well, and so people are always really confused by that. So when I say it's a friend of love, it's basically, I mean, that, for me, chastity is rising above that spontaneous emotional reaction or even physical reaction or, you know, sexual, sentimental, whatever, sensual reaction and choosing the good, the true, and the beautiful for what is best for your beloved. That is hard. No one is saying it's easy, but we're saying that it's worth it, and in the end, to love them, like, well, sometimes that means to sacrifice in that moment for a greater good. So chastity 101, go team go. I only need four more hours. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. And you're so right. Um, even John Paul II, I think in Love and Responsibility says we cannot talk about chastity without talking about love and how yeah. all of our, yeah. our actions, right, order towards love and what is good. And that's what we all want. And oh, yeah. um, it's so great to, to hear that from you. I know our missionaries, when they do their formation in the summer, they read your book, Emotional oh, Virtue, yeah. get all the, the so practical and I want to hear from you just if you have some practical advice yeah. for college students or young people about taking those lofty ideas yeah. which can be pretty lofty sometimes and making them real and concrete in your everyday life absolutely so hard that's I mean I've had so many people come to me and be like I want to do what you do and I want to like you know and I'm like ah, oh, pick anything else um, no I'm just kidding because the attack is real too the devil is not happy with us speaking out on chastity because one of his favorite ways to wound people is through sexual sin it's just real right so I think that we, if you have it on your heart to serve in that way, dude, do it. But a couple things I would say. Uh, love within your five mile radius. I think a lot of times people think like, oh, if I'm going to do anything, I need to like have a platform and I have to like have a social media presence and I have to like be the president of this and that. And it's like, no, I just need you to go to your parish and love on your five mile radius. Like it's like serving at your, you know, at your pregnancy center or just helping out with the junior high youth group, you know, like, I mean, just helping them figure it out and showing them authentic love uh, the other thing is is read good books read good stuff like watch good videos watch good blogs I mean um, my husband and I joke that we've heard uh, Fulton Sheen said that every great theologian is just a great thief and I think every great speaker is just a great thief as well uh, and that's like people come up to me all the time they're like I use your book is that okay I'm like that's why I wrote the book <laughs> right like I wrote it so that you can have something to go through and like take from it and because uh, as Jason and said like we can't be everywhere you are everywhere and so take what is good and take what works and use it but also like don't be afraid um, I'll leave with this no one can argue with your testimony so if you don't feel like you have all the right answers or you don't feel like ah you know but like to be able to speak from your heart and be like this has changed my faith my life I broke the cycle of use in my own life I have like really you know this is how I battle sin in my life to be able to give them practical to like people are hurting and hungry and they're ready to listen uh, so just love them with your example, but also with good truth and good knowledge that you've been feeding yourself with, because that's a win-win. You're you're growing, and then you're helping others grow. Wonderful, Sarah. Sure. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Thank you I for your yes. I really love Culture Project, and I love following you on social media. So if you're out there, you need to go follow them and like eat up all that they have, and invite them to your parish or your school because they're phenomenal. They're doing great work. Go team. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you so much. Thanks, Coach.